Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the call. Today, we're going to get into a little bit about work ethic and talent. The way I'm going to approach this, I'm going to share a little bit about myself. You guys are going to get to know me a little bit better today because I'm going to get into when I first got into selling final expense and how things changed for me, how the work ethic kicked in. Well, it didn't really kick in. You work ethic, you got to make it happen. That's really how it works, right? And went from having the work ethic to doing, you know, doing the process, doing the work to then the talent kicking in. Now that's the game changer. Let me start with this, guys. For you to be highly effective, for you to be the best that you can be, for you to bring out the best in you, you have to find your why. You have to know why you're doing it. You have to have your reason. And I know we spoke about this uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago. Maybe it was even last week a little bit. But you have to, you know, for, for some of us, it's, you know, maybe the maybe it's the spouse, the relationship we have. Some of us, it's, we have the family, you know, we've, we've have the children and the spouse, some maybe just the children or one or the other, right? The key is to find your why and to decide that you're going to do whatever it takes to change things for those of you who maybe aren't there. Okay. And, and again, we're talking about work ethic and how you can take the work ethic in the beginning and then basically train yourself on the work ethic to, to have a good work ethic. And then when the talent kicks in, everything changes. You really have to be responsible enough to teach yourself work ethic. My work ethic did not kick in until I was in my 40s. And that's the truth. So I know some of you guys, you, you, you beat me to the punch. You're in your 20s and 30s and you're already doing it. You're already doing what you have to do for your for your family, really, for yourself and for your family. At some point, you kind of have to suck it up and force yourself to work. And that's where the why comes in. Because look, there are, to me, there's three stages of remote final expense sales for each agent. So you've got your, your new agent learning the products. Maybe you're, you're in your first couple of weeks, right? You're learning the products. You're getting comfortable making presentations. It feels awkward. It feels kind of foreign. You get through that stage and now you've got the second stage, which is where now you've got the process down. You've gotten comfortable with dealing with objections and overcoming objections. And now the process is getting kind of simple. And now it's like you're just it's another day on the phone. It's just, you know, it's just it's just doing the work. It's doing the activity, right? And then what eventually happens, and we're seeing this with some agents, what eventually happens is the talent kicks in and you you pretty much always have an answer. That's that's the thing right there. So what happens is, and I'm going to share my story about this, you're almost hypnotizing the client to buy. And this can be good and bad. Because one thing I learned back when I was literally trying to use hypnosis and using NLP, neural linguistics programming, what would happen is I would sell people and they would call to cancel within a couple hours. It was like, it was like they, they, they came out of the hypnosis state you know, they weren't really hypnotized, but they kind of came out of the state they were in and were like, whoa, what did I just do? And then they would panic. The bottom line is when you're in that that third category and, and the talent is kicking in, it almost feels that way. And what happens is you're never letting any clients off the hook. You're not letting anybody go. No one is going to be off the hook. It's just not happening. Let me share a little bit about my story, guys. 2013. Maybe the first quarter, we had already sold some final expense. I had already realized this is what we're going to do. This is going to work for us at a very high level. And so what we were doing, it was, you know, maybe we were, I would say we were at the end of the first quarter, 2013. We would do a mail drop. You know, back then we could get one and a half percent return. Nowadays, you can't even get one percent return. So it just doesn't work but we were doing the mail drops. We would drop a thousand pieces, maybe 1500 pieces, didn't have a lot of money. You know, we were in debt, you know, it just, it wasn't very easy. And so we would do the mail drop, go out and sell, do another mail drop, 
go out and sell just and we were doing that over and over and so we were never really doing it full time like we would get it like a good weekend and then it's get the money in and save it and sell again when the leads come in and so it was kind of a struggle but i realized i was like you know there's got to be a better way and i it really it just it was common sense well if i had leads and a lot of leads when i first started guys i would get 10 leads and think, all right, I got to make sales from this. And that did not work, right? And it's funny, a lot of agents will ask, well, what's the fewest amount of leads I can get when they first start buying leads? Well, you know, in the fewest, what that does is pretty much nothing, right? So we've learned on our platform where, you know, we're able to get a lot of leads and a lot of appointments, and that's why you can sell at a high level, right? So I needed to get myself there. I called my buddy, Martin got my fishing buddy we went to the gun range we went shooting together you know we, we hung out we were buddies for years and uh you know he was in the guns and i said hey buddy i need to get a few thousand dollars together and i'm willing to sell my ar-15 my desert eagle 44 my amt auto mag this thing was bad it was a, a handgun that shoots a rifle round so and and uh a couple other guns you know a glock and there was a couple other guns and so his father actually purchased it was pretty easy his his dad bought it from me and i got a few thousand dollars together so now instead of doing a thousand piece mail drop i was able to drop like seven or eight thousand pieces we we threw it all in we just went all in we were doubling down that's really what we were doing so now all these leads start coming back now and it wasn't just me selling my wife and i were both going out one of the things we had to learn was that the local area we lived in was not good for selling face to face you know we lived in that we were right on the the miami dade broward county line and so like we're talking condominiums gated communities door knocking ain't gonna work you know you had to door knock you have to door knock you're gonna sell face to face right one of the areas i liked the best was little haiti now it's all houses right but they all got gates and half of these people were, were locking their, their gates. So you couldn't even, you couldn't even get to the front door. So once we figured out a couple of areas by, by doing mail drops in them, we were traveling through Florida. And so I had all these leads coming in, in this area. And then my wife and I would both go out and sell. And the nice thing about having that many leads, we, we figured it out. We were like, now we can have leads every day. Cause as soon as I started making money, as we were selling in the money and we'd get paid immediately. You know, this is the five star days. I know a couple of you guys know who five star life insurance company is. Uh, we were writing a lot of five star. And then what finally happened was, you know, we'd, we'd sell money, come in, we do mail drops immediately. So there was no more weeks going by without leads. We got it to where we figured out a way to make it work at a very, very high level. And we did that by going all in. Let me talk a little bit about the schedule, what you guys don't realize. So because things didn't work in Miami, you know, the local area, we were driving two to four hours away. I am not exaggerating. And sometimes, you know, think about it. You drive three, I think my limit, once I drove three and a half hours, I would stay in, in a hotel. I'd have to stay the night in a hotel. So, but all of the areas we were working were about, two to four hours away. And so, you know, a lot of nights in some not so comfortable hotel rooms. I know some of you guys can relate, you, you've been there. And, but the days that we did go and come back, they would often be, and I'm not exaggerating, 15, 16 hour days. So, you know, I would, a lot of times, I would try to set up my first appointment around eight o'clock, the earlier, the better, because what my goal was, and people never believed that we did this. We were getting so many leads. We were calling, setting appointments. We used an appointment setter to help that I would get between 12 and 15 appointments in a day for face-to-face. -face. And sometimes I'd have appointments in three different cities, three different towns, really. So I, I would do a route and travel through it. So you guys don't have to do any of that. Let me just put that out there. But at that point, what was happening was because I had figured out something that worked, I went from being a little bit of a slacker and think about it because I had no choice, really. We only had so many leads to being someone who actually would, would go to work and come back 15, 16 hours later. 
And of course you can't do that every day. We were doing that. Uh, I would do that. The most I was doing, it was like three days a week because you know, when you're doing that physical driving, you come back the next day, you're exhausted. You know, I was why, always, I was always like my second best the next day. So the nights that I did stay in a hotel, generally what I would do is work a half day and then come back home early. And that's, that's kind of the way I would, what my system was. But the bottom line is this, by doing that, and this is what I'm getting at, I developed a work ethic. It became normal for me to do what I was doing. And I was making so many presentations. This is what happened. Within a couple of months, of me doing this, running all these appointments, you know, getting, you know, you got 12 to 15 appointments face to face. You're not getting in 12 to 15 presentations. Okay. Let's just say that you're getting stood up, you know, 25, 35% of the time. Right. And so, and believe it or not, in the beginning, there were, I don't want to say in the first year, there were a couple of times in the first year where I would run 12 to 15 appointments and come home with zero sales. So it happens to all of us, right? But at this point, I had the work ethic, so it was happening. It worked. And then the talent kicked in. Something started to change. And it was to the point to where I remember just, if I came home without at least six to eight applications, I was upset. You know, like I, I felt like, oh, what a terrible, I'd come home with five applications and I remember being, this just isn't what I, I need to do more. I need to do more because we had, you know, we had aspirations. We wanted to, we had expectations to make a quarter million dollars a year. And through this business, we knew we could do it. Now, let me just say this, guys. You can't do today what we did then because the return on investment is no longer there. And if you try to sell in Florida, we pretty much destroyed it. Between us and Mitchell Hunter, it's gone. So I know Jimmy did some damage too uh, up north. The bottom line is this, guys. Something changed. And then it, it felt like uh, the only way for me to describe it is I had that spidey sense, you know, like Spider-Man, the comic, right? I knew if I had a buyer or not within a few minutes, I knew whether I should keep going or not. And that way I could go spend more time with somebody else and someone who maybe I wasn't so interested in selling, but it got to the point to where I was closing sales. I was using the NLP. I was doing physical touch. I was using several different techniques. Um, I even had at one point, and I'll, I'll share this story within a story. At one point, I had it down to where I had a way when I, whenever I was with a married couple and the man was usually the, often the decision maker, I always sold them. I always sold them. And what would happen? Basically, I had this system where like if he didn't want to buy, I would throw him under the bus. So I'm not going to really get into it, but I basically shamed him into buying. And so what happened was at the end, they would call me to either, half of them would either call and cancel immediately because they were mad at me because I, I basically said, what's wrong? You don't love your wife enough to do this? I would say that. And then they would either cancel or they would know that, and one of the other things I used to say was, listen, if I leave here, you know, she's going to sit there and think in the back of her mind, huh, does he really love me? Because he doesn't even love me enough to buy the insurance. It's going to protect me. So I used to say that. So now what would happen is half the time they cancel, half the time they would keep it just because they were, they didn't want their wife to think that, you know? So this was a process that happened to the point to where I actually had to back off and settle down. And I realized now I need to, to pick who I sell. And I, I learned that I could sell a lot of premium more than what these people could afford. And I just, I know a couple of you guys are going through that right now and it's hard. I had to figure out a way to actually lower. One of the things that I did do was, you know, I would, I would give them the options. They would take the top option. I'd look around and go, can they really afford a hundred bucks a month? And I would say, Hey, at the end of the month, do you have a hundred bucks laying around? And they would always say no. And I'd say, why don't we just lower? So I had to do stuff like that. But the bottom line is this, what eventually happened was once I got to that third level, that, that third stage, it was easy. And so with our platform, some of you guys can actually do this within just a few short months. And that's what I really want to point out to you, but it all starts. And this is what I'm getting at. It all starts with the work ethic. 
because none of that's going to happen if you don't force yourself to do the activity to make it happen. When I first started, all right, so let me picture this. I would get 10 leads, right? And so I would call the leads and get one appointment. That was pretty much it, right? Maybe two appointments. And so that didn't work. And so at the time, my upline said, well, you shouldn't even be calling anyways. You should be just door knocking. So I would basically take the leads and start door knocking at right, right around 10 o'clock in the morning until I would usually, depending on the neighborhood, we usually, you want to stop by the time the sun goes down. I know Mariana, my wife and I have both had people to tell us and make, you know, depending on the neighborhood, tell us, oh, you need to get out of here, you know, before a certain time. I remember being in this, in this one house with this couple, I'm writing them up and they were like, she's like, she's like, well, it's getting dark. You need to get moving. And I was like, I am, ma'am, I am. I was writing them up and she's like, well, no, they start shooting pretty soon. And in other, you know, just, it was just a rough neighborhood. Thankfully, you guys never have to deal with that, right? But the bottom line is this, I was doing that. Do you think we wanted to go driving all over the state of Florida, door knocking people? No, of course not. In rough neighborhoods, my wife had a gun pulled on her once. So that, that did happen. Of course not. But we did what we had to do because of our why. Because we knew things were going to get better. We were going to have a really good life. We just had to get through this. And, and basically the bottom line was that we accepted that we were gonna need to sacrifice everything for a few years. And you know what guys, now we don't have to sacrifice anything and we will never have to sacrifice anything ever again. But it wouldn't be that way if we didn't step up, if we didn't figure out a way to be our best, to pull that person out of me that I knew was in there that just wasn't showing his face. And, and that's really, that's really what, what, what it came down to. Guys, hopefully you got something out of this and, and you can understand that, let me just say this. I was, there was nothing special about me. I was not like some magic closer. That's not how it happened. I did the work, the work ethic made it work by doing, you know, for you guys, mainly it's, it's doing the dials, right? Doing the activity. I did the activity and then eventually the good stuff happened. Eventually it just got easy. It just was like, it was like silly easy. Um, agents would come down and drive with me and ride with me and see me do six to eight sales and be like, holy cow, this is easy. And then they'd go back and try to do it and struggle, right? And three weeks later, they quit. So that is the type of effect that our system can have on you without it taking years within just a few months.